All right, FreshBooks users, this video is going to be all about how to make a journal entry in FreshBooks. I'm going to teach you how to do it in general, and then I'm going to teach you some common ones that you might need to actually make. And then I'm going to give you a warning about some of the pitfalls that I see. I really, really hope you listen all the way to the end of this video. You're going to save yourself some bookkeeping heartache. All right, let's dive in. So the first thing to teach you is how to turn on the ability to do journal entries. You go to settings to the gear icon right here in settings. Let me zoom in a little bit. And then you come to the far right to this accounting section and you turn on this toggle. And it says you will have the same accounting abilities as an accountant user. Only turn it on if you've got accounting experience. Definitely agree. So that is the first step. Hopefully you didn't spend too much time trying to figure that out. All right, now I'm here in the demo account. I'm going to show you how to navigate to the button to open up the journal entry form. You have to go down here on the left sidebar to accounting, scroll down, view your accounts. I think technically you can hit here on the chart of accounts, but you have to get into the chart of accounts, y'all. That's the point. And this is the only place where the green journal entry button resides. So I'm recording this in January of 2023. So if it's much beyond that, this could be accessible in other places, but it's probably always gonna be available here and you're gonna create a new journal entry. So let's open this baby up, and here is what you get to work with. New journal entry. Heads up, journal entries cannot be deleted. I recommend creating a journal entry only if you have accounting experience. Uh, yep, that's a very good warning. I can't emphasize enough how serious this is, and the reason is is because you can't delete or even amend the journal entries. You know, if you could, like, change it and go to, you know, set all the numbers to zero or something so it's not, like, affecting any of the balances, that would be one thing, but you can't even do that. A few places where mistakes could be common are swapping your debits and your credits. You know, even the best accountant sometimes gets turned around. You make a journal entry, you go check your financial statements, and you're like, oh, I swapped it. Everything went the wrong direction. And you go back and you swap it. You can't do that. Another thing is the wrong date. Lots of times, you know, you forget that we're in 2023 now, and so you picked 2022. That's a potential problem. Another thing that can happen with manual data entry as you're typing in these numbers is you just, you know, fat finger something. You leave a decimal off or you hit the five when you meant to hit the six or heaven forbid, you know, you meant 700 and you put 7,000. Um, you can transpose numbers, 56, and you meant to put 65. So I operate very cautiously whenever I have to do a journal entry. And I also avoid doing journal entries if at all possible. All right, but here you title it, date, enter a description. Don't be afraid to be pretty descriptive here because you might pass off your general ledger and your financial reports to an accountant and the more that's in there the better also you don't want to keep this in your head you want to get everything documented and out because you're not going to remember what the transaction was for you're not going to remember why you made a journal entry in a year so be liberal with how much you add into the description part you got these drop downs down here so you'll pick your account from your chart of accounts you got your debits, your credits. If you need to do a multi-line journal entry rather than just a single debit and credit, you can do that here by adding a line. If you don't need it, you can trash it. And it will not let you save it if your debits don't equal your credits. All right, now let's talk about some common journal entries you might make. If you connect a business bank account or credit card to FreshBooks and it already has activity in it, but you're not planning on rebuilding that entire history that led up to that balance that's in the account, you're going to maybe just start like on January 1 of a certain year. So when you connect that bank account, there's going to be an opening balance and it's going to be put to something called opening balance equity. Now, it's just like a dummy account because wherever you have a debit, you also have to have credit. And so that's where pretty much all bookkeeping softwares have some an account like that, titled like that, so they can store the opposite side of the journal entry behind that opening balance. But you're going to move that from opening balance equity to a different equity account, retained earnings, or to owner's contribution, depending on the timing of when you're adding in. And the balance and opening balance equity will be the exact opposite when you have a credit card, which makes sense, right? When you connect your bank account, that is an asset that's cash that you have. Whenever you connect a credit card that has a balance, that's a liability, that's money that you owe the credit card. So that's a common journal entry that needs to be moved whenever you connect a bank account that has cash in it. If the bank account had zero starting balance, then nothing is going to, well, they're going to populate a zero to opening balance equity, but then you can just leave that there. Another common journal entry that I think is reasonable to make 
is related to sales tax. So if you're using sales taxes on your invoices, you're going to see those liabilities on the balance sheet in the liability section. So let's say you make one transaction that was for a hundred bucks, but the person had to pay 105 because five of it was sales tax. That $5 is going to be on the balance sheet in the liability sales tax account. And when you write a check for the $5 to your state, $5 is going to go out of your bank account. You're going to mark that as a transfer. Unfortunately, you can't mark it straight to the liability account. So you have to get it out of petty cash to reconcile your accounts. I have a full video on sales tax in FreshBooks. So search the channel and you'll learn more about how to make the sales tax journal entry. I'm not going to re-explain the details here. You know, I kind of get questions a lot. Folks ask me about other journal entries like loans and assets and depreciation. And I'm going to say that I think you should do everything possible to avoid engaging activity where you need to make those entries if you use FreshBooks for a full accounting. Most journal entries are balance sheet related and FreshBooks is not super strong on the way they built this balance sheet. They're making investments in this, y'all. But as of January 2023, when I'm recording this, it's still fairly limited. I'll give an example. Let's say I get a $10,000 loan. 10K in cash comes into checking. So I have to reconcile that 10,000 from my bank rec screen. Where do I put it? All my options are transfer or equity. That's all that I have. So I'm going to mark it as a transfer, but I'm not going to be able to say a transfer to what. We can't transfer it to the new loan account in the chart of accounts. So I've got to go in and I've got to add the actual loan balance in with an offset to petty cash. Well, this is doable, but it's starting to get confusing if you don't understand the concept of petty cash in FreshBooks, which is its own animal. It's a unique concept to FreshBooks. But then let's keep going. Let's say that you pay $500 a month on that loan. You know, you got the original loan booked correctly, but every month you're going to make this payment. Let's say $425 is principal pay down and $75 is interest. But the only thing that you have to work with is that $500 coming out of your checking account. But it can't be split very easily. Because 425 needs to go to the balance sheet account and 75 is what the business expense is. That's the interest expense. So every month you're going to have to mark that $500 as either an expense and then journal entry the principal portion out, or you're going to mark the entire thing as a transfer to the loan liability and then move the $75 back to your profit and loss statement so you can claim your interest expense and get that deduction as an expense. So you can see how you can quickly get derailed. One potential way to handle it is to send all your monthly payments to a special expense account called monthly loan payments or something like that. And then at the end of the year, you do a single journal entry for the 12 months total and break out the principal and interest portion. Uh -oh. Your profit and loss statement isn't accurate throughout the year, but you tidy it up at the end of the year to file your taxes and you don't claim the whole loan payment as a business expense. Okay, moving on. Some of you might be used to making depreciation entries. Well, to have a depreciation entry, we also have to first create a journal entry for the asset itself. You can't just conduct business on your business bank account and spend 20 grand on a piece of equipment and market to an asset account. You're going to have to take that transaction and use the bank rec screen to mark it as a transfer. And then you're going to create the journal entry to debit the new asset account that you create and credit the old trustee petty cash account. So that way the petty cash accounts is able to balance to zero. You can also do your annual journal entry to debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. One other journal entry you will have to make is to clear out petty cash. If you ever buy something for your business on your personal card, you will have to hand enter that expense in the expenses tab. And then you'll have to do a journal entry to debit petty cash and credit owner's equity. Because that really is an owner's contribution when you buy something on your personal card instead of your business card. But I told you to try to avoid journal entries and fresh books if at all possible. So if you make a purchase on your personal card, my preferred way to handle it is just to send that exact amount of money from your business checking to your personal and mark that money outflow, that cash out as an expense and attach the receipt so it makes sense. Even though the bank memo says the money was a transfer to your bank account, it really should have been a purchase at Best Buy or a purchase for your Dropbox subscription or whatever it was that you bought on your personal card. All right, before I tell you how to handle it, if you do make a mistake and also where to get the report of all the journal entries you've ever made, I'd like to just jump in right now and say, if you're not subscribed to this channel, you need to be subscribed because you just watched a video all about journal entries in FreshBooks. So why would you not want more of these videos? Okay, so now I'm going to tell you how to handle it if you make a mistake. If you make a mistake on a journal entry, you're going to have to do a total of three journal entries. You're going to have the wrong one. 
you're going to have the exact opposite of the raw one. That means you make the same journal entry, except you debit what you credited and you credit what you debited. And then the third journal entry is the corrected journal entry. I hope that makes sense. One other quick thing to note is that if you go to reports and you scroll down to here, journal entry, you can filter by date and get a report of all the journal entries that were made. This will be really helpful, especially if you make a mistake. Go to the journal entry, print it out or put it on another screen so you know exactly what you did wrong so you can do that reversal and then enter the correct one. All right, folks, if you ever need help with your FreshBooks account, please reach out. I provide one-on-one -on -one training. I can be your fractional bookkeeper and just handle all your bookkeeping for you. Or you might benefit from my absolute favorite thing that I do, which is my office hours for FreshBooks users, where it's a very affordable way to get support from a bookkeeper and to be in a mastermind of sorts with other business owners who are building service-based businesses and learning this bookkeeping software together and sharing tips and getting their questions answered in a group setting. It's just the best group. So reach out if you want more information about that. I'm Kate Josephine Johnson, and I help businesses build their business legacy.